Hey guys, welcome back to Senegalese Twisted. I am back again with another review of Maitresse de nos Mariés. So we go to part two, the baby shower. And the baby shower is actually really, really, really pretty. It's really pretty. Everyone is there. Jalika is there. Biram is there with Mansoura. Um, you have Cher, the father. Alalla, Fili, Noura, Merjain, Page. And it's really amazing. Um, even Raki's mom is there. Raki is actually the premier Njeke, which is the chosen person to actually help throughout the day but usually it's also the person that the baby is being named after however because it's a boy um it is named after the late father of Sheikh and Biram Makodu and uh, Raki is the premier Njeke which is just um the guest of honor i think however um i think he just chose rocky because it shows a lot a great deal of respect and they have been business partners they never grew up together and even her bond with um biram is starting to be good so much happens at the baby shower for example philly sees hamid and they go outside and they talk and it's actually just you know a reminder of a threat that you know at any point you guys can go to prison and um Sheikh actually joins them for a while and um yeah it's really awkward because of course Sheikh does not know why Hamid is talking to Philly and even Hamid is making use of this and he's like saying to Sheikh that oh no um, I'm just talking to Philly because she's ne she needs me because one of her friends is risking time in prison and she wants my advice oh my god of course Philly looks like she is going to shit her pants in all available colors and um Sheikh is like, whoa, why, did, why didn't you ask for my help? I could have helped you as well. Blah, 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 blah. At one point, Biram actually seeks up Tairu and talks to him. And he's actually giving him blessing to be with Jalika. And he's saying that, you know what? Um, you need to take good care of Jalika and our kids. Because you're going to be a new daddy to them as well. And um, yes, at another scene he's actually talking to um jalika and that's tairu tairu is being asked like what are you doing here and um yeah i think that jalika is just a bit done with tairu because she's like um Talanda does not deserve what you did to her and yes it happened but just let's move on with our separate lives and um then Taihu drops this bomb on Jalika. We're going to divorce. And um, of course, Jalika's like, well, what do you want from me? And he's like, um, speechless. Because Jalika reminds him that, you know, you lied to me. And that's that. So the most important or the m biggest spectacle of the baby shower is this. Lala is dancing with her griot and he's like singing praise to her and then comes in Marem with her own griot. He sings praise to Marem and Biram is like breaking them up and he's like stop this, stop this and even Raki tries to stop it as well and Lala is just shocked because she just does not know what is going to happen. When Raki tries to stop um, Mahem or talk bad about Mahem for and defend, you know, the family honor, uh, Mustafa stops her because Mustafa is not the type of man that wants any drama. And he does not want his wife or his mother-in-law, Merso, who actually started to chime in, to be involved in any any drama but then it continues because Merjain sees Page and she's like yes Page come here come here tell these people to get out and before he she gets what she wants 
this happens he looks at these people and he's like yeah this is my niece and her friends and that is actually the reason why Merjain is going to faint and she faints and afterwards um, Page tries to convince Merjain that you know what I did not conspire with Amsa to have this happen and he's trying to you know save whatever he has with Merjain because I feel like he's actually in love with her but she does not want to hear it and I understand because it feels like a betrayal and it's just crazy how everything is thought well thought of and it's it's pure drama I love it so like I said uh, that was the whole baby shower thing. Um, Detective Kamara is actually going to see Merso, Raki's mom. And he's asking like about Bakari Sanya. And then Merso says something. And she's like, what? Um, something about why would I be worried about someone who raped your child? And made sure your brother went to prison for it and then the inspector or the, de the detective is like but who is your child who got raped what's their name because in one of the scenes he's actually at jalika's house and asks about oh uh, do you know anyone called rocky so so she refuses to say then in another scene um, the detective goes to see Lala and uh, however Lala and Shekha are already talking and um, The detective camera he's like, oh, no, I just wanted to talk to Lala. This is about the inquiry of Bakari Sanya and um, What you see is that Lala was so afraid when he said that he was a detective until the point that he said it's about Bakari Shekha leaves and then the detective puts this on her. He's like, oh no, I know you posted those videos and photos of um, Marem. And she actually filed a police report against you. And apparently your husband doesn't know because you looked so scared just now. In a response to that, Lala actually goes to Marem's house to ask, well, beg for forgiveness. And she's like saying that, you know what? It should not actually be a surprise for you that I did that and um, you can do everything against me um, if you want I can make a fool out of myself I can beg I can um, shame myself however I cannot go to prison even if you don't um, retract your police report against me for me do it at least for the children because I can they cannot have a mom in prison and I mean the only response that Maram has is to slam the door into her face and that's it as a last resort Lala actually conspires with Jalika and sets up a meeting so Maram comes in thinking that she's just gonna have fun time with Jalika and then there's Lala and um, Jalika actually begs Mahem to just stay and hear her out. You're already here. You can just, might, you might as well just listen to her. So she does. And it's crazy because Lala is actually just making the same points. Like, you know, I cannot go to prison. I'm sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Um, however, the main thing is that Jalika actually backs up Lala. However, Jalika does not know that... Lala posted the pictures and the videos. So she's actually saying even there that, you know what, Marem, what you're saying, I understand. However, Lala would never do such a thing. So Marem wants Lala to just put it out in the open. Like, if you are saying to me that you did not post the videos and the pictures, then I will retract my report. However, she can't because she did. So she's actually saying, you know what? Yes, I did it. And now what? And Jalika is so shocked because she's like, oh my God, I just did all of this for someone whom I thought was innocent. However, is not. I think that Jalika was just really disappointed in Lala. So in the meantime, um, Mahem was introduced 
to the board of Senegindia and Cher's company, which consists of Mansoura, um, Raki Biram, and Cher himself. And then by Salif, she was introduced as the new head of operations or something for um, their project. And she, Mariam, will be the person in charge for when Salif has to go back to Ivory Coast. And um, the thing is that um, Biram and Raki have been so against Mariam. Like, they do not want to show her any respect. And the only thing that comes back all the time is that, you know, everyone has seen your ass. Your ass is on the internet. Mariam gives them is that, you know what, who cares about that? Um, this is a professional thing only. Um, just keep it professional. This is not personal. If you want to take it personal, we can go out on the street, you know. Like, catch me outside. How about that? So, Lala actually convinces or tries to convince Merdjain to forgive Pai Gay. However, she is adamant that it was a trap that he conspired with Amsa and Mahem for their marriage or the love that they have. One of the first things that Mahem wants to do while she's in charge is destroy that building that they were talking about, that, that had to be uh, deconstructed. She wants that to be done as soon as possible so that they can do the build build the building like the right way and however Raki and Biram they don't want to take orders from Mahem because they don't respect her which is based off of the personal thing and not the professional thing and um then Cher actually goes and says to Biram and Raki that you know what whatever Mahem wants is law Y'all better listen to her. And if you cannot accept that, I'm open to see your resignation letters. So then you see that Mer Jain, Biram, Raki, and Mer So are all conspiring because they want the business to be good. And they want the business to be in the right hands. And they actually are all convinced that Cher's decision making decision making is really clouded by Mahem so they want to have a strategy to make him see the bad of what he's doing and it's utter bullshit so Biram is actually really desperate and he actually goes to Salif himself and he's like insinuating things but he's not really saying what he wants to say about Mahem in his face and I think that's maybe because for a man to hear that of another man, it might be painful. However, he's just insinuating that, you know, um, you have to be careful with this woman because you don't know her. Sometimes you are with people and uh, you don't know them very well and they have another face and blah de blah de blah Then Rocky tries to do the same. However, Rocky's approach is totally different because she just said it out loud she's like you know what this woman her ass is on the internet we got videos we got nudes and she is the ex-wife of Cher and this is the first time where Salif actually hears it raw and um then it's Sheikh himself because Sheikh for Sheikh it's like you know what um we've been running circles around this and we need to you know face it because apparently we love the same woman Salif is saying that you know what nobody's going to decide for me well I'm gonna love who I love based of how I feel you're not going to decide for me because Sheikh's approach is more like you know what she's my wife ex-wife so you just leave her alone you know but Salif is like no because you're not going to decide for me i'm going to say for myself Sheikh tries this one like you're a brother to me and salif is like i'm not your brother really funny because even salif is like no we're just professionals and we work together but i'm not your brother salif actually tries to 
hit him where it hurts because it's like you know what you don't know how to manage things like your family um your siblings um your family company like it's all a mess and then Cher is like don't touch Mahem and blah de blah de blah and there are so many threats and it's crazy because these people actually have to work together again probably the next morning at 9 30 or 8 30 they'll see each other at the office it's gonna be awkward then you have that Mahem tells Salif everything and while she's telling him everything um She's actually not leaving anything out. She starts by saying that she used to be Cher's mistress. Then, you know, he married her, second wife. Then the nudes, the videos. And then she left for Abidjan and that's how they met. She and Salif. And, um... <sighs> She's actually telling Sally that, you know what, it's okay if you don't want me anymore. Um, however, this is my life and I'll take full responsibility. She's actually trying to detach from him by saying that, you know what, I know I'm not the one for you. There must be another woman out there that's better for you, who's deserving of you. And however, he's accepting. He's like, you know what, um... It is what it is. Everyone has a past. He's actually really sweet about it. However, Mahem's response is to, by saying that, you know what, I'm actually not ready for a relationship. I don't know if I can ever love again. One thing I forgot about um, Mahem and Lala's um, confrontation at Jalika's was that Mahem said to Lala that, you know what, the day you published those pictures and videos, I actually heard the worst news of my life and that news could have killed me already so the fact that you posted the videos and everything that didn't do anything to me and the bad news that she got was that she could not ever have any children so that was also really a beautiful scene but like more as in full circle because life actually balances itself out in the next part we see more about uh, mummy and how she deals with how Siaka deals with knowing that she's pregnant and she's actually uh, on the bed with um, Mahem and they talk and um, she finds the pregnancy stick and she's like oh so you're pregnant but she's saying it more as in like oh so you can have kids because she knows that she can't and that's the flashback that she that we get to see that the day that she found out that she could not have any children and um she's as even asking herself aloud that you know what have i done like why am i not deserving of having children and mommy just explains that siaka does not want her to have the child he wants her to abort and um that's how it goes and in another scene, it's the same setting, however, Jalika is there. Because I think that Mahem actually called Jalika. However, Mommy's not so happy about that. But what is important about this scene is that Jalika and Mahem make sure and reassure that Mommy knows that they are not there to judge her. They're only there to support her. However, they do put in their two cents. First, Jalika is saying that, you know what, even though um, Siaka wants you to abort, it's your choice and it's going to be your choice. And I think that that is really important. And um, then Mahem talks about um, the other side of it because she was raised without a dad. And um, this is, I think, really touching because she's saying that, you know, I was uh, born out of wedlock. My dad got my mom pregnant, but then married um, my mom's best friend. And then my mom went crazy. So she, she talks about the other side of it and her not being raised actually with no parents because her mom got crazy really early so she was alone and she's just saying that you know what i'm still here and in other in 
other scenes, we have also seen that Jalika has, uh, I mean, Mahem has always been strong and she even talked about it once that, you know what, I had to defend myself from a really young age. However, it made me who I am today. And um, even Jalika is really touched by it because she's like, you don't know your dad. And um, Mahem actually says that, you know what, if I would pass him on the street, I would not even know that he would be my dad and i think that that really does something to jalika because she feels for her and um even her two cents is like you know what it's okay everyone has something because i have a dad but he's not the dad that i wanted and you guys know he is really a bad man eventually they just say that you know what if you want, we can raise him together. Uh, mommy, you know, it's not just going to be your child. It's going to be our child. We'll take care of it together. Because at one point, Mommy actually responded to Mahem by saying that, you know what? If you want your child, you can just make your own. And she was not aware of the fact that Mahem could not have children. So I think it was really beautiful at the end of that scene that um, they just made it a friend thing. That you know what? It's not going to just be your child. We're still here. We can help you. We are in it with you. And I think that was really pretty. Rocky is just so annoying. And um, Mustafa just saying that you know what? We're divorced. And um, then Mer So is like saying that, you know what? Um, it's better that you divorce her because my child, she's not going to suffer at your hands because since you guys are married, she's only suffering, yada, yada, yada. And um, Mustafa just saying that he said that because he was mad. However, he loves Raki. And uh, Mer So is like, you know, just go shush hush go away and he does not accept it because he's then talking directly to Rocky and saying to Rocky that you know what Rocky I love you and you know I'm not a cheater you and I we have been through so much and how can you think that of me etc and they actually reconnect in that scene and um at the end of that scene, Rocky actually goes on her knees and asks for forgiveness. And Merso ain't with it. So, um, at one scene, Sher is telling Amsa that he is he does not trust Salif. And um, he did some digging and that he found out that Salif has some offshore accounts but it smells fishy and um what's crazy is that there were some instances where um lala was actually meeting with hamid however she did not know that sheikh was following them and he was following lala like a couple of times and he saw her twice with hamid so one day Lala comes home and Cher is like, oh, where were you? And Lala is like, what, are you going to ask me where I go now every time? And um, she just says then that she was just with um, Philly. And then Cher is like, oh, okay, well, let's call Philly then. And she then gets really mad because she's like, what? You don't believe that I was with Philly, yada, yada, yada. So he calls. And he's like, Philly, the baby is crying all the time. Tell your friend to come home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell her now to go home. Hashtag, you already home. So why would she lie? <laughs> it's like the TikTok trend where people would be like together. And then the girl would call the guy's friends and ask like, where were you guys last night? Or where is he now? Like, it, it was like that. And at that moment, she knew she effed up because Sheikh is actually thinking that Lala is cheating on him with Hamid. And he's actually telling her that, you know what, I actually followed you 
and this is the second time and um, he's actually saying I'm gonna pack my bags I'm going to leave you and he's he's actually asking Lala there's one thing I want to know who is Makodu's father and I was like what the and Lala actually defends herself really well because she's like, you can say and everything about me except that. I would never cheat on you, one. Two, you are the only man I've ever known says that Hamid was blackmailing them because she was the one who posted the pictures. And when she says that, she's actually really relieved. She's like, whoo, I'm really, really tired for the love of God. And then there's this flashback that Cher gets that he divorced Marem because he was tired and he had to make the choice whether he wanted to be with Lala or whether he wanted to be with Marem. And then it's like the flashback where Amsa actually came to his house and say like, I'm here for Lala and tell Lala that um, I'm here for her because she knows why I'm here, etc, etc. And he gets so mad. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to divorce you. And you need to take your stuff and go. And then he changes his mind. He's like, oh no, let's not even, you don't even have to go. You know what? I'm going to stay right here. But I'm going to ignore you until death. Shaq's reaction is really, really exaggerated because first of all, Lala did not cheat with Hamid. Second of all, didn't he cheat on Lala with Mahem? Plus, marry Mahem, bring her into their house. And now he's crying because he followed Lala twice and she was with Hamid twice and now he's doubting the paternity of their child. Isn't that hypocrite? <laughs> I just can't. This is really bleh. And the fact that Lala did not even bring that up. Because that would be my ammunition. I would be like, oh, so wait, you just slept with your mistress in our bed? And now you're crying because I met outside twice with another man? Not even in a hotel room, not even at a resort, nowhere. There were no tickets to another country or anything. And you... Don't you dare. Cher, no. On ne fait pas ça. So at one point, um, Ancha sees Siaka and, um, okay, so what happened was that they exchanged numbers. However, he never called her and she was just doubting herself and um, she finds him in this restaurant and she actually approaches him and she's like, hey, do you remember me? My friend Dalanda, she introduced us and um, I'm sure that uh, hijabis are not your style and um, I'm, I must not be your type. And um, Siak is like, oh no, not even that. I just had a lot on my mind and um, I just go off of, you know, I don't have any types, I just go off of vibes and energy and um, forgive me, just let's just be friends, you know? And um, she's like, you know what, let's just talk and I might forgive you. And they just talk to each other and just she just tells him that she just wants to have the friendship e kind of relationship just to just, you know, meet each other and talk about life and that's just what she wants and um in another scene ancha is the one that's being approached by taihu because taihu wants help and um it's like for ancha it's like weird because she never spoke to taihu it was just only like you know hi hi and that was it so she was like well you never went to my house you never asked after me you know you don't even know my family blah 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 and he was just saying it that you know what yeah but it would be weird if we would you know click and maybe there would be a jealousy from dalanda and yada 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 however she understands that part however for her it's weird because it's like so now you need me and now you know where to find me because people really be like that and um the thing that ancha can't be with is what we all can't stand because Taihu does now know what he wants. Does he want to be with Dalanda or does he not want to be with Dalanda? And that's just what she says to him. She's like, you know what? 
I'll talk to our girl. However, you need to know what you want. Do you want the divorce or don't you want the divorce? And then you see that Ancha actually goes back to Delanda and talk about this and the only thing that the uh, Ancha actually says is that you know what just talk to him hear what he has to say and it reminded me a lot about the conversation that Lala um, had and um, with Marem that Jalika set up that's what Ancha just wants she just wants um, Dalanda to talk to him because deep down Ancha knows and says it that she knows that Dalanda still loves Tahu. The only thing that Dalanda does not understand is why did Taihu threaten her whenever um, the other day when he said you know what I'm gonna do everything in my power to get the kids back and um yeah so the only thing that Ancha says is that you know what you still love him just hear him out and this is the first time that even Ben is agreeing with Ancha because those two they can't deal with each other either and um she's actually saying that you know what she's right you have to listen to your friend because you know what don't forget to put on your nice clothing, um, put on some perfume, and look beautiful like always. And I think that Ben may have this hope. Dalanda actually is going to give Taihu a chance. So she's actually um, driving to this house. But what she doesn't know that inside the house, um, Taihu has given... Jalika a tour and he's like okay so this will be this room that will be that room and she's like oh well I'm just going to change everything that's here and make it a bit of our own home. The Landa's outside in her car and she's actually calling Ancha because she's like are you sure this is the right address? She's actually reluctant to enter and when she's at the door she's actually hearing people laugh. I think she can even hear them talking, but I'm not sure. And she seems disappointed because she even brought a cake. And I think that the cake was more to say that, you know, congratulations on your house. And it's it was a nice gesture. However, she was really disappointed. She steps back and she gets into her car. And... She even cries in her car, which is heartbreaking because we all... We were all made to think that she just didn't love Taiwo anymore. And the next scene at the doctor's office and the doctor is telling her that, you know what, you're pregnant. However, you cannot keep the baby because we learned that the Lambda has a heart disease. And when she was pregnant with the kid, twins, she almost died. And that it's not going to be something new because even this time she's at risk of dying. Just being pregnant is really dangerous for her. And um, the doctor is saying that, you know what, an appointment so that we can abort the child because, you know, at this point it's her um health that matters more than that of the baby the doctor is saying that you know you already have kids and it would be a shame if they would grow up now without a mom you know and um Delanda just does not want to abort and she wants to keep it Jalika and Taihu and he's imagining their kids running around and um she's actually hesitating about the future and he isn't and um they're talking about um well Jalika saying that you know what my boyfriend my boyfriend and he's like hey I'm not your boyfriend and then she's like well then you need to put a ring on it so um in the next scene it's Regina telling um, Dalanda to call Taihu to finalize the divorce and then it's like because Dalanda got the news that she's pregnant she doesn't feel like anything and she's saying that you know what I don't want to I don't feel like it to call him and um, Regina is just trying to instigate something because she's like 
you are just bluffing i knew you weren't serious about it because without him you are nothing and um dalana is like you know i'm not afraid to do it alone um and regina is just saying that you know you don't need him she sounds like me <laughs> and then the bomb drops because Talanda is telling Regina that she's pregnant. However, Regina knows what being pregnant means. That Talanda is sick and that her being pregnant can result into her death. When Ancha comes in, Regina goes out. And she the first thing she's saying is that don't be like her. Like on edge, a man hater. And you need to calm your heart down. And Ancha's thing is that, you know what, you need to tell Tairo that he's that you're pregnant that he's gonna be a father again and um she doesn't want to say because she's like he's on cloud nine and i don't want to ruin it for him and um she's also telling ancha that you know what he won't know and if he knows it from you you and i are over and um i want to keep it I can do it without him and Ancha just doesn't agree. Then there's a scene where um, Sheikh is showing you what he meant when he said that he would still live in the house but he would make Lala's life a living hell. Lala is calling Sheikh, Aljana, Aljana, my heaven, my heaven. And he doesn't respond until Noura comes in. Before Noura comes in, Lala actually asked about the status of the police inquiry and um he didn't respond and then Noura comes in and then while Noura's sitting beside Cher she's asking the same question and this time he is reassuring her like there's nothing new um it's all good don't worry about it they'll find him Bakarisanya and then he tells Noura to check up on her little brother but then Lala's like, no, he's sleeping. I just checked on him because she wants her to stay so that he talks to her and he doesn't want that. So at one scene, uh, Mansoura and Biram are, are at the office of Cher or Mahem, so one of the directors. And um, I think it's like, it feels like very conspiratory. Mansoura is giving Biram like, um, advice as in like telling him that you know you need to um, follow Mahem's orders and he doesn't want to however she's just talking sense into him by saying that you know what it's just professional and it would look professional if you would actually do it because she is your boss you know and um, she's telling Biram to trust her that she knows how she can put Biram at the king's table and it's crazy because Biram actually feels it feels like Biram is actually listening to Mansoura it seems like Raki and Mustafa are like on a honeymoonish thing they're at the beach chilling and they're even talking about um taking their t the time off for each other they will not take any phone calls and it, it it looks really cute and they talk about what they went through they talk about the future and um there are even a lot of flashbacks of like when she was at work how she had the anxiety attacks and um how they started their friendship how they started to date um how she um encouraged him to do music and how he encouraged her to go to a therapist and the proposal their date how even at the date that she actually gave him money because she knew that he may not have money because she was his boss at that time and that was really 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 cute then she gets a phone call from Biram. this has to do with the other scene where Mansoura is telling him that you know it might it, it is really professional if you would do whatever Mahem asks you to do and that's what it is about because Mahem asked them to um destroy building rx35 and they talk about it 
and um she's like he's saying that you know what our ex 35 we need to do it and i'm going through with it and she's like you know what biram yes i'll put everything in your hands i trust you with it she gets off the phone and she's just thinking about her relationship with biram because at the beginning biram was the mean brother you know and then she talks to mustafa and she's like actually my relationship with Biram has changed so much and it's really good and I give him more responsibilities at work and I just gave him permission to um, to destroy building RX-35 and Mustafa's like what building? she's like yes a building RX-35 and he's like that's where Bakari Sanya is after that scene with Rocky and Mustafa you see that Biram is actually at the site building site and he is actually um overseeing the project and there's a dead body and that's how that episode ends however this sets a lot of things in motion Thank you guys for watching. I know this is going to be a long video. I'm sorry in advance. Go to senegalesetwisted.com for my latest blog posts. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I see you guys in my next video. Mm -hmm.